Chapter 7 The Masters of Theft A gecko viper and Melian sat under a bridge. A haunted mural of a troll being killed by several goats, as some had been painted on the underside. Melian grinned, but he didn't point it out, as Viper and Gecko were psyching themselves up. These two cracked him up on the regular, and there was no doubt about it in his mind. In another life, they had been brothers. When they first met, they were slowly being crushed by a fallen wall. He didn't know why he did, but he was able to save them and get them to some shelter while the sun was doing its crazy thing. He remembered slipping his shades on and telling them to close their eyes as he dragged them into a garage. All manner of beasts and insects stampeded and swarmed the city during the apex of the white eclipse. Pigeons flew into office blocks and terrorised those within. The windows they smashed sprayed deadly shrapnel to the few unfortunate people below. Corpses that weren't dragged off by feral dogs or stripped of their meat by insects were gnawed to nothing by rats and many other pests. The living then had other things to deal with. Viper was the face, the pretty boy. Hitting around six feet, he had dark caramel coloured skin, amber eyes and curly wavy hair. It was obvious he took care of himself, as the little flesh you could see was sculpted into a lean canvas. Melian figured a model of some kind. He had a uniform for one of those sports shop outfits, so he wasn't sure what was going on there. The Viper drooled a lot, and he found himself using a towel to dab at the sides of his mouth. The boy would frequently gurgle and burp, which Melian found hilarious, and he took a mental note to roast him on it at a later date. The boy they would come to know as Gecko was a lot of man in too tiny a container. As they would learn later though, he overcame the chip on his shoulder by being brutally funny and a shit stirrer to boot. Thinking back to his memory, Melian should have known he was going to be trouble by the awful farting and unrepentant chuckles. Melian put serious thought into lighting any subsequent barrages, but the image of his flatulence like a fuse rushing back between those cheeks made him laugh and put down the lighter. Melian saw things while he stood guard over them. They seemed to slip in and out of some kind of fever which perplexed him as he felt absolutely fine. He felt even better after he found the machete. Whoever owned this garage was a massive grindhouse fan, and they were all manner of homework prop weapons. They were all live and beautifully balanced and maintained. While those two sweated it out, he threw in a handful of films and helped himself to the owner's snack bar. He'd gotten to the fourth movie, maybe, when one of the windows exploded. He couldn't see it, but a heavy, wet, coiled mass lay on his chest. Suddenly, it became long and taut, and he just managed to grab his machete before he got whipped out through the window. Cracking his head on the frame, his vision was blurry as he whipped through the cold night air into a snug, moister place. It squirmed and pulsed, and every time it shifted, he was pulled deeper into it. Every time he got drawn deeper, a familiar drum beat got slightly louder. He knew exactly where he was. He was not happy. As he started to hyperventilate, he started twisting and straightening his body. It was super snug, but his machete was making room in the beast's belly. It was not happy either, and thrashed and screamed while trying to crush him. Much to his dismay, the creature was healing, and that drumming noise was right by his head. He grimaced and began to bite and tear till he got to the source. While biting it, his mouth flooded with blood and heart, but he kept chomping and swallowing until the creature died. Content that he had taken it with him, he closed his eyes at peace. The stomach filled with blood. He was to drown. A bubbling sound woke him from his submission, and suddenly sweet air spilled in, and two pairs of hands reached in and pulled him out. When he could look up into the moonlight, he made out the figures of Viper and Gecko. They were screaming and whooping in admiration. Melian could make out Gecko imitating a dying beast, and the Viper crawling out of its belly. The last thing he heard before passing out was them telling him not to worry and that they had his back. The trio had stuck together, surviving the first two days by the seats of their pants. Melian had eaten the heart of a great beast, and while he initially hadn't been affected by the eclipse, it had passed its abilities on to him. He was most comfortable with the harpoon tongue, but wasn't yet comfortable attempting Spider-Man style swings. The tongue was great for retrieving distant items or drawing people in for a beating. He loved the panic surprise on the motherfucker's face when he yanked them through a window. 
Gecko asked him, Is it still defenestration if you pull someone through the window? He almost bit his tongue laughing. They enjoyed the freedom of the post apocalypse world. Viper took great pleasure in burning his work clothes, and Ge Gecko dumped his college books on a shelf and never touched them again. Melian had just had his assets rinsed by his ex-wife and laughed as he managed what catastrophe had befallen her. Life became simpler. If they were hungry, they hunted. Occasionally they would bump into other groups, and sometimes they would fight, and other times they would nod and walk on. Money didn't mean anything to Melian and Gecko, but Viper struggled to let the concept go. They had argued the point till Gecko had made it quite obvious. He handed Viper a duffel bag filled with cash and challenged him to spend it. He managed to barter it for a decent rucksack, as some old man really wanted some toilet paper and couldn't travel to the supermarkets. Melian was the eldest of the three, but Gecko had an obscure kind of wisdom. Watching him win arguments was kind of like reading those old fables or tales of Anansi. Viper was stubborn, but it was a determination that he could respect. Melian suspected that that stubbornness had kept him alive long way before any of this happened. Viper sometimes wore sadness like a cloak, and Melian took care not to pry too deeply. Though, he felt they had reached a good level of trust when Viper came out to them, though. They mocked him for a little bit, then Melian handed Gecko a chocolate bar. Told ya, snarled Gecko as he devoured half the bar. He handed the remainder to Viper. Viper hesitated for a moment, grinned, then ate the rest. How? Melian demanded. Viper's slightly camp. I mean, milligrams. So how could you tell? Gecko beamed. Classic Pognophile. Viper coughed and, try as he might, he couldn't vanish. Ever wonder why he's always the one sweeping up when we have a working hoover? Melian looked confused, then took a seat. What's a Pognophile, and what has that got to do with his OCD? Gecko was weak with laughter. In little bursts of composure, he mused. He loves beards. <laughs> he was crying with laughter. Nah, man. He spends way too much time cleaning the brush of his hands while wistfully staring out the window. Melian's eyes widened. He turned to, turned to face Viper, leering. So, when you went off for a hunt with that Sikh dude... Viper turned to see the two of them staring at him like they'd suddenly transported to a pre-teen slumber party. Viper tried to run, but Melian lassoed him and they grilled him for the next 20 minutes solid. You know man, if you ever want to bring peeps back, just do it, Melian told them later. He had remembered when they bumped into Madame Bacon's bondage troupe of erotic masseurs, that Viper had, got, Viper had got into an argument and been refused service. He chastised him about making unnecessary enemies, but it kind of made sense now. Viper explained that he went back and apologised to the troop later. This explained where that tub of Nutella had disappeared to. Viper cried and hugged him. Gecko hugged them both and squeezed Melian's butt. I know that's you with your tiny hands. Gecko whooped and ran away. Melian explained to Viper. It's too dangerous gallivanting God knows where with an unknown. You could easily get honey potted, man. Also, I hope you're using skins, because if you get a dose, there ain't no gun plummets around here. Viper leaned back. It hadn't occurred to him about being a setup. He pulled out a bandolier of condoms and shook them at his friends. Yes, mum. Yes, dad. Gecko laughed from the rafters. He drifted back to now. Gecko was ready and Viper was almost there. They waited in silence till Viper nodded. The beating they'd received had made them reevaluate the way they operated. Hunting people wasn't them, and they had been coerced into a sideline that they were not happy with. They lacked the strength to break the yoke put on them. Gecko suggested training and a complete revamp. In a week, Gecko had tested several theories, and they put themselves through the ringer, fighting every day and refining their skills. Focus had more meaning in this era. With enhanced healing, you could see impressive physical results in days. 
Viper imparted some Wing Chun to both of them, but made great effort to tell them that they needed the proper Sifu. Median had located the bones of his first kill, and used the garage's, art garage's artificing tools to construct half-decent armour. He made sure that Gecko had the most, then Viper, himself laughed. He also reworked their weapons and proper fitting clothes. Now he invaded a local badminton court, cleared it, then filled it with crash mats and ramps that they had liberated from a local skate park. Every day Gecko would come up with a scenario and Melian would throw spanners into the hypotheticals. A symbiosis developed between the three and a growth happened. On Thursday, Melian looked into a mirror and realised he had no reflection. His scream woke the others and they came through to find him partially visible. Gecko went absolutely effervescent. He kept talking about new ideas and paradigms. Eventually, Melian calmed down and became fully visible, to which his cohort turned and snickered. He slept nude. Viper learned to make slime, which he could make traps with or hear people with. His first act was to stick Gecko to his seat and eat biscuits feet from him. Gecko paid him in kind when he figured he could share his wall running skills. He grabbed Viper's hand and ran up the side of a skyscraper until he was very, very sick. Melian located potential teachers and made contacts worth having amongst the local tribes and gangs. He learned of a meat locker and a great beast. They needed the heart of one and the meat of the other to proclaim their master. Viper nodded. The butcher frontage had some meat, but they were not edible. They needed the frozen meat in the back. Gekka wanted to go in through the front, but Melian insisted that they make their own arena and not waltz into it. I can feel it. He wriggled on the spot. Yeah, I think it's poisonous. He tried to sense or visualise, but all he could tell was that it was quick and large. By the time they got to the rear of the store, Melian was already vanishing and he told Gecko and Viper to get to high ground. He strolled into the car park and before he could talk, it exploded through the wall. As it rose to full height, Melian winced. What fucking higher ground? 